This week, we make a pit stop in St. Louis, Missouri, the Rome of the West, with a former housewife from Orange County and current real estate advisor and influencer, Megan King. This episode of One Star Recruits is brought to you by 500level.com. If you're a St. Louis sports fan, 500level.com has all the t-shirts you want. Paul Goldschmidt from the Cardinals. Robert Thomas, the leading scorer on the St. Louis Blues. If you type in St. Louis in the search bar on 500 level, you're getting over 3,000 t-shirts, DK. 20% off everything on the site with the discount code PODCAST at checkout. 500level.com. Let's go! Hey, this is Megan King, and I'm on with the One Star Recruits podcast. Hotty toddy. Yo, aloha. I am so grateful to be back on this beautiful island of Kauai. After a couple of days in Phoenix, Arizona, my gratitude for paradise here is at an all-time high. Five stars, five stars going on on gratitude to be back on such a beautiful place. Only six people on my flight from Honolulu to Lahui Rip. Best numbers I've ever had. That's almost private plane status, bro. Six people. All my other flights jammed Southwest style. You know, end of seaboarding happening. A plane with six people is the place that I want to be going to, bro. It was my big reminder. They had to spread us out uh, like like, like literally human weights in the plane. Everybody took their seats and then I came through. And they, Can you go six rows back on the right? Only six human beings to get the weight distro to work right. But it feels good. It was a great trip. The only thing I missed was getting to see you face to face, your bald head. Yeah, you're pretty close. I mean, I'm out in Los Angeles, uh, you know, an hour flight away. But man, six people on a flight. You guys didn't even pay for the for the fuel to get out there. That's crazy. What you're and you're talking Southwest, Southwest Airlines, Southwest, bro. Adventures with with Southwest. That flight that I mentioned was from Honolulu to Lihui. Only 21 minutes. You get up there, you're up, you're down. It's a quick, it's a quick jaunt. Before the flight, though, from Phoenix to Honolulu. Too much weight, overweight group. We had a group of overweight, which was the first time for me. I haven't been on this particular scenario. Probably shout out to the New Mexico Lobos women's softball team. Not the women, but the traveling. I think they travel with their own equipment, bro. It's got to be two tons in bats and equipment, right? You think so? Is that what's bringing the weight up on that flight? Softball, uh, softball equipment is heavy, that's for sure. A lot of bats. That's it. Anyway, never seen this move by Southwest before. So uh, all that gear, all those people, luckily they're in boarding class C. So, you know, they're not going to be a problem for you. I was B60, B60 going on. So like I said, haven't seen this, this overweight move done before. So they're, they're doing the $600 voucher thing on the, on the PA system. Everybody's interested. Nobody really moves. Kind of st- typical six. Nobody wants, we're going to Hawaii. Nobody wants to stay at Sky Harbor longer. And we were about to start boarding. I've never been a voucher type of guy. I'm not that much of a hangout at the airport type of person in general. I want to get in and out of there. I don't know if you are. Are you Rip? Are you a voucher? Are you a voucher hang at the airport guy? A little bit. You are. Yeah, maybe if it was six hundred dollars to uh, five hundred level dot com, I'd, I'd probably take be a taker. But yeah, no, six hundred dollars on like a future Southwest flight. I'm probably out on that one. I just want to get home. Well, home or to paradise. It's not like I'm fl- we're flying to Detroit. We're trying to delay it because whatever. So $600 goes out. Nobody takes it. All good. Continues on. They pull the move where the plane has boarded. Everybody has boarded. It's a jammed flight. Two people need to get off the plane. Then if two people don't volunteer, they will start kicking people off the plane, starting with the last person to check in. Because of the weight? This is because of the weight issue? Because of the weight. So that makes your check-in time very valuable on Southwest. All this is super kind of annoying anyway. Like, just give me, it's if I get a seat, let me give me a seat. But this is happening. This move I haven't seen before. The offer then went up drastically. $2,000 voucher. Ooh, deal or Two, no deal? $2,000 voucher. Got a hand up in the back. Kind of a midi, like a, like a Gordon Drogic type size dude. Probably buck eighty, good weight, had a bag on them. So boom, get off. I was like, maybe this is cool because they got a bag. They'll stop this madness. Nope. Need a second one. And dude, it was like it was like Texas Hold'em. There was nobody, nobody was putting their 
hand up, dude. And, and it hit me like 30 seconds in because I didn't have to have to, but I was ready to, to get home. It was right before I might have done it. It would have sent me back about three and a half hours. Another lady put her hand up and, and got it and they went off. But kind of, kind of unbelievable scenario there. Overweight. Then they would go to the pull off if nobody hopped in there. So food for thought. If you're ever traveling with with an overweight plane and you want to make your value guy like Rip, opportunity, hang tight, board the plane. If somebody hasn't hopped in by then, big value opportunity. Two grand that would pay for your would that pay for your friends flights? Probably pretty close. Pretty close. Yeah. Time time is money, and what you just kind of told me is that three and a half hours of your time is not worth two thousand dollars. It who knew you were a high roller? You may no longer be a one star. Two, Two, three hours for two thousand dollars. I, I think that's a deal. It's Southwest money. They don't even have TVs, bro. It really sucks. Unreal for a six-hour flight. Trying to watch the holdovers on my fucking cracked iPhone. But the professional Southwest flyers all are prepared. The woman in front of me must have been a Southwest diamond. She brought a damn iPhone Pro clip car holder. Connected her her phone there. Watching a Jennifer Aniston movie. You know I'm the guy behind watching the movie, making up my own dialogue uh, when movies go on. on, on I need a screen, bro. You I probably, need you a probably, damn. You probably had no headphones hold, holding the phone up to your ear and then and glancing at the picture every three seconds to try to catch what's going on. Maybe in five years from now, they'll pass out like two Ozempic pills to everybody on the flight and they'll be underweight within the next 15 minutes, man. Yeah, that's the that's the flight from from L.A. to uh, Scottsdale. That's the flight. Maybe in five years, Southwest will put some damn f screens in those in in those seats. The other thing that you could do that I saw people doing: you got a phone case, you can hang the front right there where the instructions and drink menu is, so you can go hands free with your phone. But you know, Southwest, I think a lot of great deals rip to Lambert International Airport in St. Louis. It's our second guest ever from St. Louis. You know who the first one is? I said it in the interview. I, I, yeah, I told her before the interview. I had her guess, uh, and she guessed Nelly. And I said, no, no, it's the other one. It's the other St. Louis rapper. And right away, she knew she knew Chingy. So I grew up about the same time together in, in St. Louis. How many, how many episodes? I know your wife was a big fan. How many episodes do you think you watched of of Real Housewives of Orange County in, in your life? Give me, give me a ballpark number. Hey, why are you putting me on the spot, Rip? I probably probably six. Okay, see, I'm I'm gonna fun fact for the listeners, and, and I doubt anyone. I don't even think you know this, DK. We've been friends for over thirty years. I never missed an episode of that show from from day one, from its inception, up until about the season, the tenth season, I'd say. And I, I pretty much stopped watching after after Megan left, and not as much because she left, but probably more so because I had kids and I had way less time, but. I was an OG, an RHOC OG. I saw every episode with Megan in it, and big fan, man. I like the way she carried herself under a lot of uh, crazy situations, and glad she bounced back on her feet here in St. Louis. What's your back favorite? Home. What's your favorite moment of that show? Number one moment, top if you, moment, draft pick moment. With her in, it, involving her or involving anybody? No, just with your memory. If you're such an expert, this is kind of even news to me. I didn't even know you were into that show. What's just your of of that season of that time frame? What's your number one draft picked moment? I'd say it was it was getting a, a glimpse into the IVF journey with uh with Megan and her then husband when they had the twins down in Orange County because it, it was it was real. It was uh something a lot of people can relate to, and it was uh you know they kind of let the curtain down and went inside and saw how things work down there. So yeah, it was, it was back, you know, 10 years ago when, when IVF wasn't as big as it is now. And look at you, Rip. You are such a sweet man. You go to the sensitive stuff of the show, not the fighting and the throwing and the, and the yelling. You just go to keep building a relationship over there. Rip true fan. Number one fan, big rip. Enjoy this interview with Megan King. Now joining the One Star Recruits podcast, we have a native of St. Louis, Missouri, a mother, in a former life, a real housewife of Orange County, but currently a concierge real estate advisor for Dealman Sotheby's Realty. The social media queen, Megan King, is on with the One Star Recruits. Thanks for hopping on with the One Stars, Megan. Happy to be here. What an intro. Thanks, guys. That was a good intro, Rip. Well done. Yeah, welcome, yeah. Megan. Oh, let's get started with some energy straight up. You went to Old Miss. 
They have one of the best sports chants in the country, one of the best traditions in the SEC when it comes to home games at, at Oxford. So, Megan, we're going to try. Rip and I are going to do it with you. Can we do a hotty toddy chant together? Oh, yeah. Damn right. <laughs> all right. All right. All right. Rip, you ready? Are okay. you ready? Ripity. Hell, Hell yeah. yeah. Damn, Damn right. right. Hotty toddy toddy. Gosh almighty. Who the, the hell, hell are we? we? Hey. hey. Slam, bam, 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 bam. bam. Oh, oh, miss by, by damn. damn. <laughs> that was that was one star. We're gonna keep weak, it in. But... That was weak, but that was a yeah, yeah. good first try. Maybe we can finish finish at the end. We'll try one more time. <laughs> um, amazing chat, Megan. Welcome. What was what was your best sports memory at Old Miss? It seems like a random, amazing sports school for you to go to. Yeah, I. I that's honestly like one of the reasons I chose it because I wanted that that uh, like sports feel, you know, that D1 sports feel, that community feel that co comes along with it. Um, My favorite sports memory at Ole Miss, I don't know, you know, when I was a freshman there, Eli Manning was a fifth year senior. So I got to see him and actually like, I kind of got to know him a little bit. Like I, we hung out a little bit. So that was, that's like a little bit of a early claim to fame of mine. So I like that. But I don't know, like the, the things that I remember the most about sports are not the actual game but the party and yeah. that's what old miss is really known for so i think it's very apropos that that is my number one sports memory makes perfect sense perfect sense we went to arizona state university so we totally understand the party vibe it's just set up on game day for football games is it kind of like wisconsin or someplace where the street just takes over i think oxford i've never been i like to think that it's a place that's on my list and people should go to uh is this a place for, for football yeah. fans college football fans that it must check out yeah, I mean, there's nowhere like the Grove. So when I was in school, we still dressed up for the games. We would wear high heels and cocktail dresses, and we'd go to the games with a date. Like, we we got asked to go to the games, and we'd wear our sorority stickers, and the guys would wear suits, and we'd sit in the student section, and it was just rowdy and fun. But, yeah, in the Grove, everybody sets up tents. It becomes a little city, and... The Grove is just like a grassy area in the middle of, of the campus. It's huge. And people set up their tents and they will actually bring chandeliers to put in the tents. And this is not like, this is not your mama's tailgate. I mean, this is creme de la creme, like the fanciest, the silver is bro broken out. The, um, the, the, like I said, the chandeliers, you know, fancy, the fanciest food, everything. It's, it's another level. The South is so good. Big shout out to our guy, Ben Mincy at Barstool Sports. Huge Ole Miss guy. Ole Miss is coming back. Nick Saban is gone. Ole Miss, it seems like it's time time to come on up, Ole Miss. Let's let's be a powerhouse again. I believe in you. You, you left L.A. You moved back to St. Louis. Yeah. You're doing real I estate, did. like yeah. Rip said. We see mm -hmm. the pictures on social media of what 500K gets you in the Midwest and what 500K gets yeah. you in Cali. My wife and I yeah. are currently investigating our next move. Listeners know we're in Hawaii. We're, we may be headed back to the mainland. Why do you call St. Louis home? And are people sleeping on Missouri as a great place to live? Yeah, I think in, on the Midwest in general, people are sleeping on. And um, yeah, the St. Louis is, it's getting more young, younger people. They're, the the talk around town and in the news is that it's going it's the next major tech city so first we started with san francisco and silicon valley we moved then to austin during the pandemic now you know prices in austin are insanely high and not affordable and now we're shifting to st louis and the reason why is because st louis has a ton of um intellectual capital there's major universities and hospital systems in st louis that attract the academics and other intellectuals. And so you have, you know, that sort of like, um, like think, think tank of, of individuals, but then you combine it with the affordability of housing prices. And then the cool thing is a lot of our downtown is, it's not what it used to be. And so these tech companies love to be able to go in, get rent super cheap. They have these beautiful old buildings with exposed brick, massive spaces, huge ceilings, and they can house all of their brand new employees for not that much money. And their employees like it because they're able to then live affordably in a city that's safe with all four seasons with incredible public schools. We have sports teams too. We got the Cardinals. We, we have got the sports. Blues. So we're not, although I Cardinals, did see it. Blues, and soccer. 
and soccer city, go back city. and soccer mm-hmm. yeah soccer's taking over yep. too big in the midwest actually unfortunately i did see a, st- a stat in spring training so far every team has hit a home run in the first two weeks of spring training except the st louis cardinals it might be a long year They're for just... you baseball wise that's okay i've I'm a fan of um, other sports teams too. So I'm like a good fair weather fan. I hate to admit it, but I like to be with, I like to be where the energy is, is high and positive. Catch Megan King out at the playoffs in St. Louis, but it's nice to have big sports teams too. It sounds like a great place. It's it's one of those places for Rip and I, we we do road trips with this podcast. We want to go to Indiana and we're going to add St. Louis to that list. It's, it's one of those places I think that's been getting better press uh, you're starting to see people leave some bigger cities, like you said. I I have friends who have done the Bay Area Miami route. Miami got burnt out. Guess where they're going to next? The Midwest. It's you're, you're... true. Like the Midwest is so. Uh, the Midwest has been forgotten not only by just like you know regular everyday citizens, but by television. Like think about reality television. We've covered practically every ounce and inch of the coast, and, but we really haven't we we don't know what's in the midwest nobody's done the midwest at all and so even in my world of entertainment that i still dabble in they talk about well what's going on in the midwest like you know enlighten me so i think that's going to be next on the list too so you may as well get like sink your teeth into the real estate here before it goes up because it's it's going to be a discovered market very soon it's coming. It's happened. It's happened in LA. LA was, was, is where Rip is. It's one of those places you spent some time, some good times, some bad times. What, what was your favorite thing about LA? What was your least favorite thing about LA? You know, I like the, the feel of um, opportunity in LA. It's just, it feels like, like every day when I woke up there that I could do anything and uh, tons of possibilities. And the people in LA are, um, I I would say overall very creative and not just creative, like artistically in the traditional sense, but creative in the way of like um, entrepreneurially and like tons of hustlers. And I really appreciate that work ethic. Um, Even though on any given Tuesday, you're going to find the beach crowded. And I don't know what those people are doing, how they're making money, but they seem to just always be at the beach. So, which is also a great thing because you have the laid back attitude with like this world of opportunity. So that's what I miss about LA the most. And people care about how they look, which I, I li- love beautiful aesthetics. It makes me feel happy. I like to look good and, and put on makeup and make my bed in the morning. And I appreciate when other people, you know, respect the, the uh, aesthetics in the same way. Now, what I don't miss about LA is the traffic, the taxes and the COVID days, which thankfully are long gone. Great answer. Megan King, keeping it real. I, I like the same thing. I'll add homelessness to the list of things that are annoying me in California right now as well. Uh, but great place to look good, feel good, get that sun. Um, I like looking good too once once a year when I get my act together and, and actually look good. 2015, 2017, you did the, the Real Housewives of OC thing. I know you had some beasts yeah. in there. Uh, I know, you know, Heather, Alexis, Shannon. Do you have any friendships with any of these ladies from today? Is that history? Is that in the past? Uh, or did anything stay no. 10 years later? No, I am I have um, friendly relationships with Tamara, Heather, Shannon. Um, I did with Alexis until recently. She's not very happy with me because I with the most love I could, I could muster. And truly it was, I was trying to say, you know, just be careful. You're rushing into a relationship and look, I'm one to talk. I've done the same thing myself. I was just trying to protect my friend, but she was not interested in what I had to say, like, which is like, she knows better than me. So I, all the power to her, but, um, overall, yeah, I definitely am friendly with a lot of, um, current and former housewives, Gina, could we see the crew yeah. getting together? Can we see the crew getting together? Maybe to, to perhaps to ho- host, uh, come for an open house visit. Maybe some marketing stuff involved in the next phase of your career. Could those two worlds collide? Perhaps. I mean, Gina has a real estate license and so does Tamara. I don't know if Tamara has let it lapse or if she's active, but I know Gina's active. So there could be something with that. I mean, real estate is a fun, sexy business, but it's a lot of work too. So if you can make it in real estate, that's definitely, you know, something to be proud of. So much work, so much emotional work people don't think of on the agent side because 
this is the biggest spend people are going to do. And you're a mama. How are you balancing being a mom and balancing your clients and balancing your showings? How's that all working? Yeah, it's all a balance. I mean, um, and it's tough. I have an incredible nanny that helps me out. And, and I also have uh, shared custody with their father. So that's helpful in order for me to, you know, focus on the income that I need to make and, and building my career so that I can provide for my children. But yeah, the balance is tough. And and then, you, you know, on top of that, I'm still an active influencer. So I'm still creating um, and, and coming up with engaging content and interesting content. So, um, and I still travel a ton and go to New York in two days. So it's really hard. At the end of the day, I feel like, you know, I've checked off a few things on my to-do list, but then I've added even more. So it's been a good lesson in um, humility for me to, you know, really try to, try to prioritize my life, you know, working out, staying healthy, getting sleep, getting a social life with, you know, being a mom and reading, volunteer for parties and reading. And it's, it's impossible. <laughs> In short, it's impossible. Yeah, but you're doing it. And congr- I can feel just hanging out with you today. Uh, it feels like you're a very balanced human being and uh, passionate and uh, purposeful right now at this stage in your life. And uh, thank you. I think it's going to inspire some other people who may be going through some wild patches uh, to know that things things come together. But life's always wild no matter what. Uh, but it must, must feel nice to land comfortably in a place that sounds like you love uh, doing something that you love. So congratulations. For sure. Thanks. And I think it's all about attitude too. You know, you can decide to wake up with a smile on your face or a frown on your face. Like I just try to remind myself to look at the glasses half full because the, it's the same amount of the liquid either way. That's a great tip for anybody. And we, we have a few more for you, Megan. We end every interview with a segment we call one star to five star. We, we talk about all the time. We're one stars, but we're trying to get better with advice and tips from from everyone we have on this podcast like yourself. So just a few more that questions and let's use a, a one to five star scale, one being the lowest, five being the highest. First one here. We talked a little bit about social media. You're really good on social media. And you had to me what was a, a five star idea last month where you we're putting up posts about each of the homes you ever lived in. And you had these just beautifully written anecdotes about what each place meant to your life. To me, they were awesome to read and just really great content that actually anyone could do because we all have those specific memories of the places we've lived. You really are the social media queen. What goes into those ideas for your posts and where does that creativity stem from? Is that all you? Do you have a team? How, how's that? How What goes into that? Yeah, that's all me. And um, I think... I think, and I appreciate it. Thanks for the great compliment, Rip. But um, I, I I came up with it because I thought, well, you know, what is selling real estate and buying real estate mean to me? I've done it so many times. And so I want my clients to, to A, see that, you know, I've, I've been through this process many times in all of the ways, in ways that I've had money and ways I haven't had money and renting and buying and all and selling all the ways. But the thing about a house is, of course, it's, you know, a, a massive investment, like you said, like the biggest investment most people will ever make in their lives. And they should be very proud and mindful about their purchase. But I think even more than that, it's emotional because you're putting you're building, you know, a life in this home. You're having hopes and dreams for what can happen um, in this home. And throughout my home purchases, I've had a lot of those hopes and dreams sh- shattered you know, when I've moved out of the home and that's emotional as well. So I thought, well, let's, let me like talk about some of these milestones that I've been through in each of these homes, because that's truly what I think of when I look at the house. I don't think of the money I made or lost. I think of what happened in that home. And so I think it's just to be able to relate to people on, you know, the, the emotions behind why we do the things we do is more important than like finding funds in the bank. Absolutely. And and just some of the like specific things, like the little heart you had in the backsplash, I think somewhere in, in Mississippi or yeah. Missouri, like, yeah, just yeah, great memories from, from each place, I mean, even, even if it didn't end well. But moving yeah. on here, we, we mentioned earlier, we interview mostly athletes, so we appreciate you bringing some diversity to the podcast here. One thing about sports, nicknames are really big in sports. So we thought of a fun little idea. We we came up with some nicknames for you. We got three nicknames, and we want Boy. we want some ratings on a scale of one to five star. I don't know. I, as far as I know, you don't have a nickname that has stuck at least. 
But Megan, these are always Rip is Rip loves this, and they're always very shitty. So let's see what he pulls. Okay, out. amazing! I can't wait. Let's the see. The good thing about it is we're one star, so you you can expect nothing nothing less than than one star <laughs> okay. here. First one here. Let's go. Your brother's a model, a very attractive man. Mm -hmm. Your 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 sister was a, a pro soccer player. You have you have it all. You have height, beauty, brains. I think it runs in the family. So first one here. Let's let's go. Not with the king of queens, but the king of jeans. The king <laughs> of jeans. What do you think about that one? That's funny. Yeah, no, I'll take that one. Yeah, that's that's good. Let's stick with that one. <laughs> Little play Five on stars. your last name here. Okay. Mm -hmm. and, Not bad. And, uh, we're, we're, we're catching you today. Number two here. We're catching you today driving driving around St. Louis. A lot of yeah. a lot of good suburbs there. A lot of eclectic neighborhoods. So I'm going to I'm going to go with the Kim Kardashian of Kirkwood. How about that? Oh, mm. gosh. <laughs> uh, all right, that, I'll that's probably that a bad one. Actually, you know what? The the, KKK, are, those right? Those are, KKK, yeah. KKK. That's not going to work. That's yeah. not going to work. Yeah, throw no, that no, one no, out. No, no, no. Throw that okay, one we'll out. Throw there. that one out. Mm -hmm. All right, and and number three, we we mentioned you're the second person on this podcast from St. Louis. The first one was Chingy. Uh, Nelly had the hit mm -hmm. "Country Grammar." So let's go. Part glamour, part country grammar. Oh, I'm down. I'm down. Glamour and country grammar. <laughs> Bingo. Bam. Five stars for that one. I will five take stars, it. Yes. Rip. Not bad. Wow. Wait, can I ask a can I ask a not very professional real estate related one, question? Rip. rip sometimes he misses, sometimes he gets them. That was Rip, that might have been <laughs> one of your better ones. Megan, can I ask a yeah, can I ask a not very professional not very professional question, but the entire world probably wants to know. Is is Megan King single on a scale of one to five stars? How single are you? Okay, wait. So which one is single? One or five? One is single, five is locked up. Okay, so let's go with a three because I want to keep people guessing. Oh, Ooh. I love it. Like that. Yeah. Nice. All like, right, it's, three. Mm -hmm. it's Way to three. dodge the question. You never know. <laughs> you never know. All you listeners out there, another reason to go follow or hop on that Instagram. Give a follow. At Megan King on Instagram. If you need a property in St. Louis, hit her up. She's at Dealman Sotheby's. Yeah, or, or elsewhere. elsewhere. Anywhere. Yeah, anywhere. the concierge agent is that, – that whole thing is – to um like it, if you're you know in LA I can help connect you with your perfect agent and then you have me by your side the whole time like text FaceTime and I can help hold your hand throughout the process you can ask me what you should and shouldn't tell your agent and it's no additional cost to you and are you uh, can you sell anywhere New York Florida are you are, are you strictly uh, Missouri so I'm California only... right now no I only have a license in the state of Missouri but through the concierge um off um service that I'm offering I can work in in conjunction with, you know, your agent in whatever state you're in, even globally. All right. Go on global. And referrals exist out there in the world. Referrals. So come on yeah. in, agents. You've got somebody going to St. Louis. Why not do it with Megan? Yeah. Hit me up in Kauai, too. All the places. Hit I'll even up. fly out there and come tour yeah, myself. Nice. I'm not kidding. I will. I need a couple more M's in the bank before I can do this state. But one That's of these cool. days. Everyone go follow her at Megan King on Instagram. Hey, I'm a guy in my 40s. I loved watching you on RHOC back in the day. But at the same time, I feel like I'm really glad you came out safely on the other side because sometimes that stuff doesn't end well. And, and and I'm glad you're back at home focusing on the kids and the family and all the balance. So we wish you the best of luck. And thank you again for coming on with the One Star Recruits. Thanks, guys. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. Thank you, Megan. Fun interview different angle here at the one stars rip excellent excellent booking doing what we said we're going to do in 2024 keep expanding this thing expanding our reach getting some more reps man that was fun good stuff yeah it's always nice when our wives actually know one of our guests probably happens like four times a year but uh yeah awesome having having a, a powerful woman and uh, entrepreneur on the pod yeah great interview with megan king dk I'm, I'm glad we both know her and our wives know her that's a win right there new contact in st louis you never know where you're end up in life i was in arizona bro this weekend did the arizona run what do you want to talk about you want to talk about arizona what else do i got hung out with the trash talk boys that could be an option of discussion uh i've completely given up on the phoenix suns 100 percent. i'm out this year what do you want to talk about you got any, you got some best and worst highlights from the trip maybe a uh, top two or top two best moments uh bottom two worst moments well, the weather was great. And listeners, people out there who don't who don't met, know, understand Arizona is hot and ridiculous and it's a really terrible state, but the weather was great. It's the artichoke 
heart of Arizona weather the first week of March. You also have spring training going on. So this is not new news to anybody. You know, everybody knows this is nice in Arizona. On the insider side, though, it's the time right before spring break. So a lot of the it's not it gets a little crazier during spring break in Arizona. Let's at least the Scottsdale area and some of some of the Tempe area actually clears out. So this whole area, this whole time frame is one. You agree like this is the prime time. This is the sweet spot of Arizona travel and weather right now. It's 70 degrees, bro. 71 and then 59 at night, like perfect desert nights. Yeah. Just a, a quick jab, but that's pretty much every day in California. But yeah, I mean, it, honestly, it's it's the reason why uh, why hotel rates are out through the roof right now. It's the most expensive time of the year for hotels in AZ. It's like I looked at some hotels, four fifty for like a for like a normal Fairfield Inn in Mesa. You're probably close to a spring training stadium. Like people from Cincinnati coming to escape the twenty degree weather, coming out to see a Reds game in surprise. So yeah, you're you're gonna hit four 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 twenty five for the Holiday Inn Express. It's prime time. It's prime time. So that's happening right after I got off the flight, uh, right immediately took it with the Ted's hot dogs. You know me, same old G, a brat, chili cheese, onion rings, Dr. Pepper. And then, yes, later that night, diarrhea. It's another story. I don't know what it's from. I also ate two full snack packs on the Southwest flight, bro. And that Parmesan pepper cheese, I all continue to make the mistake of eating that. Always a culprit of bad stuff, though. Shout out to the fruit snacks on that snack pack, though. Those are fabulous. Welch's how or something. Long, how long after the Ted's was the uh, was the bathroom? How, how... That night. So I'm not sure. Also could have been the Dr. Pepper. It's not an urban legend. Dr. Pepper has a little bit of, uh, what do they say? X lax? No, nah, it's not pear. It has a little something in it. Yeah, this Pectin. is embarrassing. Winston, look up what's in Dr. Pepper that might make you you have a BM. I don't know. Could be it could just be travel in general. Uh, but nevertheless, a wonderful arrival into the into the state. I looked at some real estate in the beautiful city of Gilbert, Arizona. Shout out to our homie Dave White, real estate agent, taking care of one star's rip out there, downtown Gilbert. Not bad at all. Not bad, Rip. Recognizing that. Uh, ran into a couple One Star listeners. Had a guy at the gym tell me, hey, tip, tie a knot at the end of your basketball shorts at the drawstring. So listen to that episode when I kept losing my drawstring through my sweatpants. Remember that one? Yeah. Uh, getting some more advice. I don't know if we made that recommendation. Just, just, tie a, just tie it, bro. That is the solution, which was funny to me. What else, man? Main reason for the trip was to knock out some tasks at my old man's house in Tempe, T-Town, the 480. The checklist included getting Wi-Fi set up. This particular project for my pops just celebrated its 12-year birthday. The first time of him saying that he needs to get Wi-Fi was about 12 years ago. So this has been about 12 years in the making. Huge success, Rip. Second thing with my pops, change mattress and change se- sheets. Seems easy, not as easy as you think with a with an 82-year-old man. Number three, build boxes for lemons. How many do you think I got accomplished off my three main uh, task lists with Pops? Seven hours Two. of flying on Southwest with, with diarrhea. Two. You know me too well, man. Well done. We never got to the boxes. Successful Wi-Fi after 12 years. Shout out to T-Mobile. Shout out to the 5G gateway internet service that it's... All you do is plug it in, scan a barcode, make your Wi-Fi code. You're on 5G, Rip. Times have changed. Can could not believe it was that easy. So that's huge. That means I can go to my pops' house and visit now and not be stuck in 1996. He went from from having zero Wi-Fi to better Wi-Fi than you and I. Yeah, bro, he's in the heart of Arizona now. Tempe happens to be the, the the middle of the damn state now. That place keeps keeps growing out. I hung out with our friends at Trash Talk Boys. Beautiful Gilbert. Downtown Gilbert is beautiful, Rip. I don't know if you've been out there re- recently. Got to check it out. Years. You got the, 20 years since you've been to Gilbert? I, I think so, yeah, at least. Sweet Lord. It's nice. It's really, it's, it looks like a good date night downtown spot. You also have huge fucking fan. They love you, bro. These trash talk boys. I know you've helped them out with a couple deals and stuff. Uh, you, the Jack shot that, that that they have their little studio. 
Uh, it really is nice. And they want you to visit, bro. Put it on your damn list. And I appreciate the hospitality and the grub. Train, CJ, the crew, Big Chili. Big things coming for those guys. You're connecting all kinds of dots all across Arizona. You don't even know it, Rip. You're building, hey, we, you're bu you're building this brand of podcast guru. We love TTB on, on this podcast. And anything we can do to help them, we're going to do for sure. And I definitely need to get a trip out to the Jack Shack. I've been saying it for almost a year now, but... 2024 is the year it happens. I'm I'm going to Gilbert. Make it happen, bro. That was a fun trip, though. I think I've talked about me, me so much, bro. That's crazy. Let's do uh thank you for letting me vent. I think I went too hard on Southwest and I just transferred into Arizona like it was no thing. That's maybe this is my one star moment of the week. I'm going 90%, 10% on this podcast. Talk time. It's, I'm sorry, bro. Hey, I didn't do much at all this week, but I do have a one star moment of the week. You want to get into it? Yeah, hit us. One star moments. We all do them. Rip loves talking about it. What'd you do? We all do them. We love to talk about them on the show because we're one stars and we go through moments every week like this one. Mine this week involves baseball, of course. Anyone who knows me well knows that for the next three months, the place you can find me the most often is the Long Beach Little League baseball fields out here in California. And my seven-year-old is in coach pitch right now. He's doing practice games where basically the rule is if you get four balls, you don't walk, but the coach comes in and pitches to you and you get however many strikes, uh, however many strikes you have left, you get that many pitches. So we had the most powerful hitter on our team. He's a, he's a nine year old who actually lives on our street. He's one of our neighbors. And I was the coach pitcher. So I come in, he walks, I'm the coach pitcher. I come in and throw a couple pitches to him. I'm standing way too close in retrospect. So I throw one perfect pitch to him. He lines it right back off. I tried to get out of the way, but it nailed my big toe. Probably like probably a good like 70 miles an hour. Real baseball shot to the big toe. Uh, and actually, that, that was a one-star moment of the week. But the worst part is that if I would have been able to get out of the way, that thing probably would have went all the way to the wall, probably inside the park home run. And we lost by one. So I ruined it with, with knocking that thing down with my toe. My, my reflexes aren't what they used to be. So one star moment of the week getting hit by a line drive and the big toe is all cracked up. I'll send you a picture of it and uh, yeah, taking away, losing the game for us by one. Well, everybody listening, including myself was going with the nuts from the beginning of that story. That would have been bad. You took it to your big toe PG, but, but clearly a nut hit is worse than a toe hit, a toe tap. Did it get a bounce through? Sometimes you get a nice bounce through. A kid can make a play, a one-hander. Well, that's the rest of the story. It went off my toe, shot about, I'd say, probably 25 feet up into the air. It hit so hard. 25 feet up into the air. The pitcher, some, probably the only kid who could have made the play, the, their best uh, fielder, the pitcher was off the mound. He grabbed the ball and threw the kid out at first base. So it took away a home run, took away a hit. Just awful, awful experience. Uh, I was in pain for three days. Still hurts a little bit. Oh, my goodness. Toes. Saw a weird video on Twitter of, of it looked like children at a school licking teacher's toes, bro. 2024. Wild time to be alive. I don't know where I was going with that. That should have been my one star moment of the week. That, that hit my algorithm somehow. That is a very weird transition. The truth. That is weird. Sorry. Sorry, Rip. Sorry, listeners. I was so hungry with a three hour layover in that Honolulu trip. And I had in my head, I had in my head that I was going to get Burger King in Honolulu. Like within two hours of the first leg of this trip, I was, I, I was ready and I was pumped. Seven hour flight. Like I said, two Southwest treat boxes and that horrible Parmesan pepper cheese that breaks all your wheat thins. That's all I had. And I, I'm, I'm, I'm pumped. So I get to the Burger King in the food court area. It's nostalgic for me. And at airports, it's really the only time that I do Burger King. Can't, you're not going to catch me at a Burger King brick and mortar. I don't know why. Maybe shame. I don't know. But at an airport, it's okay for me. So anyway, you order on these huge touch, screen, touch screens now at the airport. Not, you don't stand up and talk to a person. That's fine. I get the Whopper Junior Meal with cheese, uh, a bottle of water, and small fries. 18 fucking bucks. 18.99. Whopper Junior Meal. Crazy. That was the moment though they they had me. I was already got. This $18 purchase was 35 years in the making, really. And 
I ate it. It made me happy. Inflation is fucking real. But they know what they're doing to us at airports. They have for years. Everything there is crazy. But 18 bucks for a meal, bro, is where we're at. I went to Filiberto's in Arizona. A carne asada burrito now is $19, Rip. It was seven bucks when we when we left that state in 2006. Might be an old man rat right there, but those numbers seem fucking high to me, dude. We talk about this like every third episode now because we're yeah we're in our forties. We're those old people now that are complaining about prices. But man, that honestly, that eighteen bucks for Honolulu Airport, one, it's in Hawaii. Two, it's an airport, so I, I kind of expect that. You're price giving that a value grade. You're letting that guy no, no, in a value but I, grade. No, but I I expect that price. But the nineteen dollars in Arizona for a burrito, that's crazy to me because Arizona should still be a few bucks less than everywhere else. Well, they they messed up making them so big from the get go. You want to stick with that, you know? Everything costs more. Three choices at the Honolulu Airport food court. Rip. Which one are you going to? These were the three that existed: Burger King, which I already decided. I've been going there since I was seven after piano lessons. It's stuck in my soul. Generic Chinese food buffet or California Pizza Kitchen. What are you choosing? Damn, I'm probably going CPK because I'm, I don't want to eat Burger King before a flight. I guess it's only a 21 minute flight, so you're you're probably okay there. But I also I had pizza the night before. I did bonus pizza for those who know. They know, so I had yeah. bonus pizza. So I was on a double pizza pizza chart. So uh, yeah, so if you're if it's only a 21 minute flight, I think even if you have explosive diarrhea, you could probably hold it in through for 21 minutes. So yeah, I think I think you made the right choice. I'm going Burger King as well. Yeah, Burger King. I'm still can't even. I don't have the balls to do the full whopper. The full whopper, even though I would have loved to eat it, I would have. They show you the calories too on the big screen, so that it's all. What a game! What right. a time to be alive! I'm talking about the Trash Talk Boys, who you just helped connect with some 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 great sponsors. You've never even met those guys in person. Shooting two podcast, been on with us tons of times. Rips never met them in person. 2024 it's wild 18 dollar whopper juniors anyway that was the bad it wasn't even the bad because it was good i really loved it i sat in the zen garden at the honolulu airport and i ate that thing and i dipped the fries in some sweet and sour sauce holy shit okay now that we've lost all our female listeners in the first part of the pod and megan king's wonderful interview what was your uh what's your recommendation of the week give us something good give us something for the female <laughs> listeners dk no they'll stick with us this is a, this is a, this is a feminine side of of me that came out uh food wise also food wise when i go when i travel i start eating so a lot of my hits are food consistently as you can see i've already walked you through my roadmap um one star recommendation of the week what is the name of it winston can you look up Cool, he's on it. A crepe shop. Crepe shop seems to be the next big thing. You're going to France, so you're going to get the real deal pretty soon. You might as well start testing out a couple crepes to see what you like so you don't just Nutella yourself up as soon as you get there, Rip. You can figure out what you like because they're starting to pop up all over the place. Saw four or five of them while I was in it, going from Chandler to Tempe. So maybe not. I don't know. Maybe they won't be. But I like crepes. I don't love them, however, but I like them. And I had something that I would never order before, and it was it was just glorious to me, simple and glorious. Buckwheat crepe with honey and peanuts. I'm out on that one. I'm out. The last peanuts, I'm out on that one. The peanuts would the kill you. You you can sub out the peanuts with pecans. They might have been pecans, actually, to be yeah. honest with you. That can you can good. you fuck with pecans? Yeah, now you're now you're talking my my style. Right off Rural Road in Elliott, bro. Great little place. Buckwheat crepe. But then they have like 70 other ones that are all looked fucking bomb. Crepes. So is it, you're going dessert crepe. Are you, are you taking that over breakfast every time or is it the time of day? What are you? We, well, I crepes. doubled down. I got I got to go for me and my pops and we split. And then I did one with egg and bacon and some more traditional shit. Great dishes, bro. Hey, guess what? Also cost me 18 bucks a piece. $18 should be the name of this show. Marco Bellinelli. Wow, so you're dropping oh, almost forty bucks at, on yourself at a crepe place? That is insane. Well, me and my pops, I got I got a brunch for me and my pops. You know, brought it over. We had a little tea and had some crepes. I figured we would do something nice for for a snack, and it was. And this was his choice. He said, "Give me the buckwheat one." So I would have never got it. But next time you're out, Rip. Next time you're out. What are you going to get in Paris when you step up to the crepe shop? You've got to be ready. You can't step up and, and well, what's good? What are you going to step up to the crepe shop in Paris? Tell me what you're ordering. 
I'm going to hope they speak English because I got no French in me right now. I got about 60 days to start learning some French. But, yeah, I think I'm, I'm going with one of each, too. I mean, it went, when, when in Rome, I mean, shit. I like one of dessert. each of what? You're getting Nutella? You're getting vanilla bean? You're getting lemon curd? What are, what are you getting? I got to see the menu, man. I've never been to France. They probably have everything over there. They probably have, you ever been to a crepe? Egg, have you ever mushroom? been to a crepe shop in, in LB? Do not compare a crepe shop in LB to one in Paris. I think they, they're they pronounced cra craps. I think you call them craps over there. It's not even the same word. Yeah, they are craps. Charlie, they are craps. That's good. By the way, your nickname thing in the interview is working out pretty nicely. We're going to have to get our production guy to maybe do like a uh, Rip's nickname intro to that. It's getting that good, man. Uh, I actually Steve, feel like I'm, I'm really close to one of these sticking. I, we had Steph Blurry and that got someone Someone else came up with Kareem Abdul-Jabbar for Robbie Avila. It's a little better than Steph Blurry. And now I got uh, part glamour, part country grammar for Megan King from St. Louis. She loved it. I doubt it'll stick, but I think I'm pretty close to getting one of these to stick, man. It's going to be a great. Yeah, we need to theme it. That might be something we can we can we can make a little bit better. I mean, the world's always look. Actually, I take that back. The world hates people who give other humans nicknames. How about the guy in the friend group who starts calling somebody a nickname they don't want? Guess who that is? Is in my friend group, right here, your boy DK. My yeah, homie Washburn. At one point in time on a road trip, was eating a bag of corn nuts. About three weeks later, I tried to call him corn nuts based on him eating corn nuts. He was pissed off. He did not, he did not want to be called, called corn nuts because he ate corn nuts one time on a road trip. And uh, I continued it, bro. Guess what? I'm patching the torch to you. You're actually good at it. We're trying, man. And if we get it on video, the moment we nickname a celebrity and it sticks, that's going to be an epic moment. All right, my one-star moment of the week actually has to do with the celebrity. He's blowing up on Instagram, so it's really an Instagram follow for this guy. His name is Nick Cassano, C-A-S-S-A-N-O, otherwise known as Nicky.Cass, Nicky.Cass on Instagram. I know you know this guy, DK. He's had a couple baseball videos go viral lately as, as like a baseball coach for Little League and just really good stuff. He, he does all kinds of stuff. It's not just sports. Uh, he's got a million followers, so he really is blowing up. And, and so, yeah, that's the wreck of the week. It's follow Nikki.cast on IG. It, he'll make you laugh every day. Your algorithm is such a dad status right now, bro. You're getting all the dad stuff. All the dad humor is hitting with you. All the all the little league stuff is hitting with you. Great time to be alive, huh? Might have to get this guy on the pod. NikkiCast.com. Let me see if I can find this out. He's He's got a subscription service. Guy's got it made. Seven bucks a month, 65 a year. Way to go, Nikki Cass. Rips in love. Hit the music, man. Rips reaction. Let's wrap this thing up. Bitcoin is approaching its 2021 all-time high record. Rip 67,000 and continuing to go. Rip, how much Bitcoin do you own? I own zero Bitcoin. Uh, I think of you every time that I see the price going up and, and I feel bad to ask about it because I know you lost all your Bitcoin in the fire. Hopefully it was insured. But yeah, I own I own zero Bitcoin. I own $100 of ETH that you had me buy four years ago. It's currently worth about $67. So not a great investment, but hey, I'm keeping that thing. I'm not selling it. ETH is next. It's coming. Hang on to that rip. And I was particular case because I had it on a different, on a cold storage and my password was included in the fire. So that was a rare case. Part of the reason why it's working is because it doesn't, it's not supposed to happen that way. But zero rip, typical, typical millennial, pre millennial rip, zero. Denver Broncos cut Russell Wilson. They take a 85 million dead money hit. Listeners, in a nutshell, this guy, this GM, George Patton, gave up. A first, another first, a second, another second, a fifth, plus three players, a fourth to get Russell Wilson. In return, oh yeah, they also gave him a $242 million contract. In return, he received two years of Russell Wilson, back-to-back -back losing seasons, $85 million in dead cap space. GM George Patton also missed completely on Nathaniel Hackett who ruined the Jets as well. Meanwhile, McDaniel, Brian Dable, all these guys were sitting around. Somehow, this GM, Rip, still has his job. And in all of the world, who is the dream GM for the Denver Broncos, for all those fans out there? Uh, they had John Elway, so I'm going to go with, uh, you can't say him anymore, shit. 
Tough one. Let's go with Scott Pioli from the Patriots. I don't know where he's at now. I think he's with another organization, but he built he built those Patriots team before they started sucking. And uh, I think he's got a good track record. So he might be with another franchise. I have no idea, but I'm just going to say Scott Pioli. Pioli, not even Belichick. Pioli, we're going to dig him up. He's probably in Miami. Just just retired. Winston, check, Winston, check where Scott Pioli is. Okay, Come back to us on that. Spring training. Arizona's in full swing. I went to zero spring training games. Feel a lot of FOMO. A lot of really cool spring training merch out there that I would have loved to maybe grab a couple things, uh, Rip. But you got three days at spring training in Arizona or Florida. I'll let you choose. What teams are you seeing? Must see. Say you have a free world, then you have free open schedule. What three teams, spring training, you getting tickets for? Yeah, that's an easy one for me because I, I grew up in Arizona and I know it so well. And it's not necessarily for the teams, but it's for the stadiums, the atmospheres. I grew up a mile from Tempe Diablo Stadium. Used to ride my bike there every morning in middle school to get autographs. Uh, so that's my number one stop. The Angels happen to be there. Probably the worst team in MLB, but I'm going for that stadium for the atmosphere. Then I'm going to head over the next day to Scottsdale Stadium for the Giants down right near downtown Scottsdale. Pure sun, beers flowing out there. Another great stadium. And then the third one, I'm going to go out uh, to the west side and hit up Camelback Ranch. Uh, I hate the Dodgers, but they got a hell of a team. The White Sox are also there, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hit one of those games because that's probably, I think, one of the newest ones in AZ. I've been there once right when it opened, and uh, it's a great venue out there. I knew you are going all those directions, and I love every bit of it. We are such Arizona homers. We do just love talking about Arizona. We love talking about St. Louis. Thank you, One Stars, for rolling with us. We're going to be back with another guest. Might be talking about some more Arizona stuff, Rip. I didn't even get to get my Phoenix Suns take. I'm out. I'm out. We're going to talk about it next week. They're trash. Gary was right. Gary was right. By the way, Winston's back. Scott Pioli currently unemployed. Get the man to Denver, the 303. They need a GM. Get the guy out of there. Scott Pioli is unemployed, DK. See you See next, next week. week. Hey.